to start because we said we start at five sharp and would like to use the time that we have. So first of all, welcome and thank you for everyone who's joining the Q&A session today. We um, have these uh, like, okay, the other way around. Uh, these nice headers up. So the Q&As, right, today is the first one with, with an industry partner and we have Bianca, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name right or not, McFadian, say, say it for me please. Bianca McFadian, that's perfect. Fadian, okay, McFadian um, from Antelect. And uh, she actually is interested in getting to know you guys, um, the students who are studying either computing sciences or IT or who are interested in joining this field. And um, we kind of spread the invitation out so that we can reach um, as many people as possible who are active in this field. And this event format was started by the computing sciences department like recently. And so we're kicking it off today with intellect. Very thankful to have you, Bianca. And uh, John Failing, Professor, um, Bre oh, and also Brenda Scholes are here from the Computing Science Department. Also, Andre Kalitz has joined in. And really, um, we have, I'm going to be the person moderating it together with Isaac. Isaac has been the person in touch with you all. And he's the person, if you have any questions, you can just reach out to him. We have the chat. So if the questions are coming up even within this session when we are speaking, right? Please feel free to either post it in the chat or to raise your hand and even ask the question uh, yourself directly to Bianca. Because really now um, it's the time for you to be curious, to be brave enough, to show your faces and um, just present yourself in the way you would like it to be. And um, the info sessions, just as, as an info for everyone, we are recording the session so that um, Isaac can take maybe snippets out of it, also for the social media channels. So we hope that you're all okay with that. And um, yeah, and then as I said, questions are very welcome. You can either use the raise hand function either like this, but probably it's better to keep, uh, take the one that is provided by Zoom. I hope that you all know where it is. It's under reactions, and then you can raise the hand like this or even like put a thumbs up if you like something. We would like this to be very engaging. So feel free whenever um, whenever there is something that you want to mention, then please feel free to do so. Okay. I'm seeing that Brenda is saying something about... Okay. Yes, and also for if people have actually missed the call um, because there's a deadline or something, they can still review it. Okay. So we have a few videos that Intellect was happy to share with us in advance that we would like to kick off with. And afterwards, we imagine this to be a very engaging session. We have, of course, some questions prepared, but if you do have some, then now is the time for you to actually pose them. Okay. Then over to Isaac with the videos. We hope that the tone is fine. It might be a bit soft, but um, we hope that you can hear it. You can give us a thumbs up. Okay, Isaac. Okay, cool. I can't hear Isaac. You mute, eh? Maybe that's why. Okay. Try again. I will share it again. Apologies. Uh, Isaac, also make sure when you share that you share with audio. Okay. Pronounce I. So there we go. My name is Pilo Echemapana. That's the full name, but people call me Pilo because it's easy to pronounce. I studied at the University of Kuzulu Natal and I did a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Information Technology. When I realized the culture, like around the presenters, who people who were far gone, obviously, in their careers, but they're still very down to earth and wanting to help and getting us started up. And whenever you went and inquired about something, people were very, um, well, would help you readily, basically. So I appreciate that, appreciated that a lot. So I think generally some people who have a lot of knowledge don't like to actually impart that to others. But one thing I saw with the people who were very knowledgeable in what they knew, they really wanted to impart it to us as the grads. So I appreciated that a lot. Yeah. I'm Reg Equipments, and I studied BSc Computer Science at University of Pretoria. The actually the first time I realized that was when in the demo room, 
when they when the GMs were criticizing my work, I found that they weren't going to sugarcoat things, that there was a standard in, at intellect, and that's what I like. I like to be held accountable for what I do. So that was the first time I realized that. My name is John Garasel, uh, say BSCRT from UJ. I'd say the interview, when I went to the interview, I, was, I felt how difficult it could be just to get into this company. And as soon as I made it, it was from there, it's just been like family orientated, like, welcome, hello, how are you? You JP right? Let's get to know each other. And that's a big thing for me. Like when I worked before, it was, okay, you work in here, just sit down and do your work. Yeah, it's like, how can I help you? What are we doing? You know, so I like that. So I'm Grant. I studied, uh, I studied with the real name of Monash, South Africa. I say when I sat down with the first team I was assigned and I started talking to them about what they'd done, we actually started working with some stuff and I realized these are actually really intelligent people. Like these are some of the smartest, sharpest people I've ever worked with, which was, you know, one of the moments I realized, well. So my name is Rowan Poptikoski, Kajel. I studied, uh, I did my undergrad at the University and then I did a master's degree at UCT. I think that um i think very quickly i very early in the beginning i realized that it was where i wanted to be because i was i think the first thing was i realized i was surrounded by really talented enthusiastic people and that's always what i've wanted in any, any like anything that i've done i've always it, it makes a big difference if you're surrounded by people who are equally as enthusiastic and driven to do stuff because it actually brings up the best in you. I'm James Marchant. Uh, I studied at Spitz and I studied information system models. I think that it was probably actually during boot camp, kind of realizing, you know, the people I'm working with are some of, you know, some of the smartest people that I've worked with. You know, if I compare it to university projects, kind of the dedication people are putting in, you know, how hard people are paid to work and actually, you know, how smart the people I'm working with are. You know, kind of being realized, you know, I'm working with people who are ambitious like me, you know, and they're, they're, they're keen to learn, they're keen to work. And that's that's kind of the kind of people I want to work with. So, you know, that kind of made me realize that I joined the right company. I'm Kamu. Um, I studied a BSc, a BSc in computing at the Belgium campus. Honestly, for me, it was a moment that we don't see the website. <laughs> and the reason for that was because um, I wanted a place where I could be surrounded by my people, my people as in Jess, you know, people that have the same thinking and people that are exposed to the same things as I am in terms of career, my career. So now it was really challenging because there were lots of places that I could have gone to. But one thing that stood out for me about internet is the fact that it accommodated for my character, my personality. Not only that, it was also more, it, it, it was just, I was a culture fit and they were offering something that I was willing to devote my life to, eight hours of my day every day to, mm. and that's what I liked about it, so that's what stood out for me. Just enjoy it. Enjoy every bit of it no matter how stressed out you are, no matter, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for you to learn a lot and you're not going to remember everything. It's, it's a great volume of information, but use this opportunity to learn what you can, enjoy what you can, make friends with the people around you because you're going to find that these people are not just going to be your colleagues, but they're probably going to be your friends. So just enjoy every minute of it. it it's going to seem difficult, but it, you're going to look back on it with very fond memories. So to any new recruits, I would say just grab the bull by the horns. Uh, boot camp can be quite intense. It can be very long. You get very stressed. Um, you start to get a little bit irritated with the people around you and it's almost you almost forget that you're they're your colleagues so you can sometimes get a little snappy and things um at the end of the day the one thing that i took away from it which will probably help you as well is that 
everyone there is there to help you succeed. No one is there to see you fail. It's not a competition. No one is trying to beat somebody else. You're all there working together for a common goal. Um, and as soon as you realize that, it suddenly makes everything so much easier. It suddenly you start to realize that sharing knowledge is much better than sort of like hoarding it and keeping it to yourself. And um, at the end of the day, when you come out of this experience, you'll be a bigger and better person for it. I think you're going to work very hard, very, very, very hard. So prepare yourself for that. Um, people are also giving up a lot of their time to help you and teach you and you're getting paid to learn. So make the most of that opportunity and don't ever get too comfortable because the second you get comfortable, something's going to rock your boat and surprise you. So be prepared for it. I would say be open to learning. Don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no stupid question. The only way to grow and learn is to ask those questions. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay, thanks, Isaac. You can stop sharing now. So these are great videos giving insight in like the perspective of students uh, working in your graduate program. And I'm very happy um, that you're with us, uh, Bianca. And my first question to you, because I've seen that you have worked at Antelec now for three and a half years. So what made you join the company? That's a very good question. And thanks for asking, because it was one of those questions when you do move companies that you really have to dig deep and ask yourself the question, why? You know, why are you moving? What is important um, to you as an individual? So for me, it was all about growth um, and not being um, stagnant in the current job that I was in. So when I was um, approached by Intellect, the first thing that I did look at was what growth opportunities are there? What do they do in order to grow their people? Um, and at the same time, I looked for transparency and honesty. So not just companies talking about what they were offering on paper, but when you got there, it was a total different story. And from my perspective, I don't think I would still be here if it wasn't um, true and fact factual. So what we put out there into the market is what we live, eat and breathe every day. And I guess the biggest thing for me is that it comes down from the top. So whatever leadership is, is preaching is what they're actually living and they're demonstrating day to day. Um, so yeah, growth definitely. And that is something that the last three and a half years has certainly taught me. Um, but I still have a long way to go, believe it or not, um, regardless of the amount of years experience I have with Insulate, it's just endless. Sorry, Mareka, I think you're on mute. We, we joke about this being 2020's problem, you know, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, actually, no, I think it is. And I think it's great what you're saying with leadership, like actually showing um, like how they do things so that you also feel comfortable um, yeah, doing, yeah. doing what you like. And um, thanks for sharing that story, how you got there. And so probably the people who are sitting here, they might be very interested in how would they then join? What are the opportunities that you do offer to graduates? Perfect. So let me start there. So what career opportunities do we offer graduates? Um, so in terms of job roles, what we do every single year is we take on between 60 and 70 graduates. And why we say between 60 and 70 is because it depends on how much we've grown that year. And also, you know, kind of like what the graduates have learned themselves and what they bring to the table as graduates, not in terms of working experience, but in terms of how hard have they worked during their, their three or four year program. So we look at, and you would have seen on the videos, big culture fits. So do you share the same values as intellect? Are you willing to get stuff done? Do you want to form relationships and, and fellowship? Are you willing to grow and do you still want to you know keep growing after you've graduated and once we've established that like it really is very simple you literally log onto our website um, and you get onto our careers page you send in your application and yeah we do sift through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cvs so what i do recommend is 
you know, show us a little bit about your personality, stand out. Don't just send us a resume, add a, add a picture to it so we can see who you are. Put in a little bit about um, your information. So what have you done outside of your, your university degree? Have you helped a family member? Have you played a musical instrument or learned how to play a musical instrument? Um, you know, anything that is really personal to you because that's how we identify with individuals is that individual personality coming through in the application. Um, and yes, of course, marks do count. So if you are out there and you are still studying, work hard, it's only three or four years of your life that you really have to knuckle down. Um, you can always go and party afterwards and thank goodness for lockdown, there's not much of that going on, but really do focus on taking these next, um, you know, these next steps seriously and really focusing on, on your career after graduating by doing well now. Thanks a lot. Is there any questions from the group so far on like the application or on the CVs? If, if there's not, I can also just delve a little bit deeper into that. So really what our application process is all about is you just, um, you know, send us your CV. And remember, your CV is the very first interaction we might have with you. So what we pay attention to, Software Engineering 101, is attention to detail. Please do not get your name wrong or a spelling mistake in that CV. Pass it around your family members, your colleagues, your current um, you know, friends around you. Let them do a sanity check for you. But yeah, definitely send through a, a well looked at CV and well thought out CV, as well as I said, like that cover page, just put a little bit of your personality and tell us who you are a little bit. Um, and then a copy of your ID or passport um, and your latest transcripts. There's literally those three things that you'll need to send through. Um, and if you send those things through, recruitment won't be phoning you to ask you for those documents. This to me, it doesn't sound like a lot actually. Nowadays, there are companies that require like a video of yourself where you kind of record and present yourself. So right. whenever there's like an easy access to an opportunity, then really put some time and thought into the documents that you do send in. Um, we have a question or a remark from Andre. Do you wanna go? Thank you. I just would like to ask Bianca if she could maybe give the students some guidelines on what they should include in their CV. Because they come to me and they say to me, you know, must I put my primary school results in? And, 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 uh, the, and, and I was prefect, yeah, and, and, and I was part of the chairman's club uh, uh, of, of the university. Um, I've got my personal opinion about what should be in there, but you as a business, what are you looking for? It's a very good question, Andre, and I'd like to actually um, possibly suggest something else in this forum is if the university would also like to set up sessions where um, our people's team and recruitment team come in and actually give those guidelines to your students in an hour session or a half an hour session or a class session, please reach out to us because we can set up separate sessions for that as well. And we'd, we'd actually like to do that in terms of how to prep your CV, what interview questions to, to look out for, how to prepare for an interview and tricks and um, tips around those as well. So that's probably a longer session, but for tonight, um, I would definitely say that it is all important. Remember, as a graduate, you don't have industry after industry after company um, information and experience to put into your CV. So as much as we can see in that CV, that tells us a lot more about you um, is what we at Intellect definitely look out for. So it's not just your name, your ID number, where you've graduated or where you're graduating from. Um, and maybe, you know, all of that, your school, what you did at school does tell us about that kind of, what kind of a person you are, you know, did you get involved? Did you take on extra murals? Did you take on over and above what you were supposed to be doing during, you know, either school time or university time? Did you lead groups? Did you 
Yeah, just about your involvement. And that's why we also look at anything outside you've done. So if you have a passion for software engineering or development, you know, are you involved in kind of tinkering a little bit? Have you set up your own websites? Have you loaded that code onto GitHub? Have you asked people's opinion about it? As much information as you can give us about you is what we're after. So our joke at Intellect really is about the fact that we're more of a people's company who happen to do software. Um, so it's around the person and the individual because we believe anything can be learned or taught. So it's about more about your attitude and who you are. Yeah, I happen to also sometimes review like CVs from friends and I sometimes give them the advice too that the more you kind of give examples of the work that you have been doing and it might even be linked to the CV, then it's, I mean, you link it from your CV to lead somewhere for them to view. It can give them a very good overview about the work that you do. So that's quite a good advice. Thank you for sharing that. We have a few hands and we have two questions in the chat. So I, I would like to take um, the ones who are actually raising their hands first. How about Lumka? Do you want to pose your question directly, please? And please don't be afraid of turning on your, your videos. We, we like to deal with people, but I understand that there is load shedding going on as well as bandwidth issues. Lumka, we can't hear you yet. If you try to, same thing. While you're fixing it, yeah? Still not, we can't hear you. We can see you now, so that's great. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we can't hear you though. We can't hear you. There we go. No, no, not yet. Okay, while well, you're fixing uh, your tone, maybe Patrick wants to go and then you can go after. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Pat. Can you guys hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay, cool. So I'd use my, I'm actually using my desktop computer. So like I'd have to swap to my phone and everything. So we <laughs> won't get to see my tired face. <laughs> Aww, um, okay. One thing. I'm wondering here is um, you mentioned a lot about the individual person um, and obviously we all have certain strengths that we lean on. Um, for me in particular, I have, um, well, my first question is how, you know, is there a way that we leverage those strengths? I'm assuming there is like, what sort of direction can we go? Um, for me personally, I find that I tend to be better with people um, and organization and not necessarily you know, yes, I'm strong with, you know, some of the work that I do, you know, one tries their best, but it's not like the pinnacle of sort of what I like to work toward or what, what just comes naturally. Um, and that's what I'd like to know is how, you know, what sort of direction does one go? Yeah. So that's a really, really, um, it would be interesting to know what you're studying, Patrick. Oh, I'm doing the BCom Computer Science and Information Systems. Cool. So it's a really good question um, that you asked because a lot of the things that we can't be taught um, all the time is stuff like EQ. So we teach a lot of those soft skills at Intellect because that we've got over 900 people that are very good in their craft um, and what they've learned over the, 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 the years that they've been involved in software engineering. But a lot of the things that can't be taught um, kind of when you're in development is the people skills. So if you're really putting your hand up and saying that those are the types of skills that you have, plus you've got craft skills in terms of what you've been studying, I mean, that is, that is already a win-win for, for a consultancy like ours. So that sounds like, what are, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what are you waiting for? Yeah, so a lot of, um, a lot of our people skills as well come across in, um, they choose business analysis um, in our organization. So what they do is then they have a direct line into the client's business as well as our software developers. And they are basically the, the string between those two. But yeah, strong communication skills, strong EQ skills um, are very, very hard to come by. And if you think about it, um, you know, 
even over the last year and a half, being in a digital world, that's become even more difficult because you're no longer face to face with that human being um, and interacting and being able to practice those skills. So having people skills, having good communication skills, being able to get your point of view across um, in a friendly but strong manner, um, all of those EQ skills, very, very, very important to, to grasp and to continue practicing. Okay, thank you. Lunka, do you want to try you. again? Don't give up on your tone. Oh, put it in the chat, Lunka. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, please put it in the chat. We can't hear you. Um, we have two more questions from Christopher. So he, the first question is, what would your advice be to a first year student as to what they can do over the course of their degree to differentiate themselves from other candidates down the line when, uh, when they graduate? Yeah, I can answer that one first. So again, really good questions coming through this evening um, and ones that I love to answer especially from the first year. So remember back in those days, so long ago when we actually used to have career days at the actual university and meet all of you, make a little joke there, it was just literally two years ago, um, is we actually used to come across a lot of first and second year um, students. And our advice is always knuckle down, like I said in the beginning, really focus on getting good marks. It really does show a lot to the employer that you've taken it seriously, you've studied hard and you've made the most of it. Obviously we're not all A students. So um, it doesn't mean because you haven't got, you know, A's that you're not able to, to actually do what you've been studying. So again, study hard, make sure you're getting those good marks, but at the same time, do additional stuff. Look at companies that take on vacation work, look at companies that take on interns, um, you know, so when you get into your second year, because that's normally when that program starts for most companies, is get involved, do, do a six week stunt during your holidays at, you know, interning at a company, put that on your CV that you did. I see a lot of students who are at university, and then they actually put that internship on their LinkedIn profiles to show that they've spent six weeks getting under the hood um, of software engineering at a company. And the second part of the question is, what criteria makes a candidate stand out in terms of skills and tech stack experience? So don't worry about tech stack too much. Um, what we say to, to everyone and what is 100% is that we're, we're tech agnostic. So what we like to do is solve problems. Um, so we look at the problem and then we'll solve that using technology, but the right technology, not the latest or the greatest all the time, just because we want to use it and it's exciting, but we'll choose the technology that is right for that problem. So focus on your problem solving skills more than tech stack, focus on the methodology of learning a new language, because once you've grasp that you're able to you to learn an, another language whether it be c sharp or java or, or javascript or whatever so focus on that first and foremost and don't look at specializing either like get a good grasp of what software engineering holistically looks like before specializing and maybe moving into the realms of ux or bi or data that, does that answer your question uh, Christopher, I know that your question also involves more, uh, so maybe I can just touch on the second one because you wrote it in the chat. So the second question uh, linked to that is, do you think that the languages covered by the universities in South Africa match the requirements that intellect has with regards to like bringing the skills already, or is it also de being developed at your company? No, so currently they do. Like I said in my previous um, comment, was it's more it's not really about the language. So I think most um, universities are doing Java or a form of C sharp. So I think that's that's one hundred percent. But it's really about how you learn a language and what process you follow in order to be able to grasp that. Because once you've grasped that, you can learn another language. So I do think so. I mean, what we know about NMU is they've got a, you know, great, um, a great curriculum. Other universities as well. Like I think everybody's asking that same question. But 
yeah, don't fall behind. Um, look at what's out there. Look at what's being innovative at the moment and what you can bring into the university curriculum now that doesn't throw the whole thing off, but certainly adds to it. So Christopher says, thank you for answering this question. Uh, and then Carmen has another one. And she said, firstly, what are the most sought after skills in industry? And secondly, is there any software that would be beneficial to familiarize ourselves with before going into industry? So sought after skills is exactly what all of you, I guess, on this call are studying. So you are the sought after people, anyone with a business computer science degree or a BCom information systems um, or anything along that track, whether you're doing electrical or electronic engineering, megatronics, um, anything that has a software engineering, um, especially around obviously development background. So you are really sought after. You have the pick of the litter out there. Um, so don't take that for granted either. You know, also use this time now while you're studying to research companies coming to these awesome events that the university sets up to get to meet industry, see if you identify with the companies. Because some of, some of our advice is also like, look at the different companies. You get startups, which is very different. You're gonna be hands-on across lots of divisions. Then you get corporates, which you might be stuck behind a desk, you know, programming the same piece of code for five years and not growing because that's what, you know, a corporate might do as opposed to a consultancy maybe like ours and others out there that you get to work on different projects, different industries and gaining all of that knowledge. So yeah, really you know, do your homework as well in terms of what kind of industry and companies you, you want to um, work for. So yes, in terms of, of skill, um, yeah, you guys obviously on this call is, is what we are looking for. What was the second part of that question? The second Sorry. part was about the software. So is there any software that's been official for students to familiarize themselves with uh, before going into it? So the majority of software that we still use is around C Sharp, Java, JavaScript. And I'm not sure if the student's asking for any non like programming software. What are you using uh, at Intellect? non-programming software so we work on you know we we do use some products if that's what the question is about so obviously we work closely with amazon and closely with microsoft with aws and azure um everything is predominantly cloud-based um yeah most of the stuff is obviously custom built so it's it's, it's um, green roots not um anything that we build on top of unless it's a client that already has products um, and we've just been called in to enhance that or develop on top of it. But predominantly all of our staff is custom. Yeah, and what I uh, can also encourage you students, like uh, I studied in the IT consulting space like two years back without having an IT background. So really, I think you should build on the skills that you already have and really think that you can learn anything if you just know how to learn. And that's what your studies are all about, like being curious and exploring different things that you're really interested in and finding your path that way. So um, the second or the, the question from Lumka now came in and she not mentioned that she noticed that most of the graduates in the videos that we showed at the beginning, they studied um, B, B science, computer science and um, degree along those lines. So my question is, do you consider IS graduates as well? I think that's information systems, right? Yeah, yeah information systems, we absolutely do. Um, and uh, I think I might have mentioned it earlier, but most of those graduates kind of tend after they've, you know, looked under the hood, they kind of tend to veer to the business analysis side. If they've got a, a, a BCom IS, that's kind of where they, they like to go. I'm not saying that they, they do, um, but yeah, we absolutely do. So a degree is a degree. What that degree basically tells us is that you are dedicated, you have taken the time to actually learn and that you can learn by passing. So software development is all about that. It's, it's about being able to learn something new every single day. So if you have that ability to solve problems and the passion for learning and growing, that is what's most important. 
Okay, thank you, Bianca. When, maybe if I could just touch on, because um, I think I did see in the chat about, you know, what subjects to choose, and you know, the, the whole mathematics, applied mathematics. You would have noticed um, that data science, business intelligence, I think are all kind of like the buzzwords still at the moment. Um, but our advice is always, you know, rather specialize at a later stage. You know, if you want to get into software engineering, actually understand what the developers are doing and what they're building before trying to do anything specialist on top of that. So even our UX engineers um, most come from that type of background. Our data scientists or data solutions engineers, as we like to call them, have been software engineers before and then, you know, gone on to specialize. So I understand the whole mass and applied mass, and that's probably you leaning towards kind of that whole data science, business intelligence um, spectrum. But if you can um, try and do both, like first get into software engineering and then specialize at a level at a stage. Not to say that that's the 100% right route, it's just the advice that we give. Yeah, it should definitely be your route. So if you are really keen on exploring something that really sparks your interest and you feel like you want to do this for a few years, um, then it's always good if you kind of like like sort after your talents, like just go into your talents, explore. Um, and that's what the student, like the study life is all about. I really enjoyed mine. And there, um, there was another question very much on the practical um, skills besides studying because what I got from what you were saying Bianca is that really just try and focus on good marks of course because this does show but then when it comes to experience and now when you are a student uh, I know that studies in South Africa I must just say they're very very more, much more intense than some German universities and you guys you're doing a lot of stuff but when it comes to companies of intern, like offering internships, what would be the best way to get into intellect if you are still in your studies, but you want to explore? What could that be? Yeah, good question. So we also, um, you know, had to try and navigate 2020 when uh, COVID hit and lockdown hit. We used to have a job shadowing um, initiative, which actually allowed people in school um, from grade to grade 12 to actually come and job shadow for a couple of days just to see what the industry looked like and to get a feel of what software engineering was like on a day-to-day -day basis um, which obviously we've had to stop because that's definitely kind of a you know hands-on experience that you need to get at school level for university level from second year we used to have our vacation work we don't call it an internship we call it vac work so it was any time between June, July, and November, and December. We are looking, in fact, when I say we, it's my program that I run. So I've been looking at ways we can bring that back and offer it virtually. And there's only a few, you know, teams that, you know, we can look at, you know, putting a student on a project that can actually learn virtually from them without you know having that person by your side being able to rubber duck with them which is or pair program with them um, so it is difficult and um, we we have taken on four BAs last year with with Fitz University um, I'm, re I'm taking on another graduate or student now that is actually joining us next year just to give him um, a bit of exposure so if you do want and you are interested in back work and you are second or third or final year, please do send us an email on careers or career at intellect.co.za. Um, put your interest down because I am looking at reopening up that program from a um, remote perspective. So that actually is a good, there's good news for, uh, from COVID that you guys, you can actually do like a bit of remote uh, work while you're still in Kabecha uh, or wherever you're currently sitting to study. So that's great. Um, and I think if there are no questions in the chat, I'm just going to continue because we have one more that's based on the top reason why graduates want to be employed by your company. Is that a question? Perfect. So we've, we've done, as you would have seen earlier this evening, we showed a couple of videos and we do these videos with students um, after they've finished their bootcamp with us, which is a two month program. So you're fully employed with us, 
Um, and then you go on additional training, which we hold ourselves um, from our solutions architects to tech and team leads in the best in industry, teaching you for two months. And basically what that does is just ramp you up in terms of real life, life work that we're actually working on on projects. Um, but I think most of the answers that have come through is really, it spans across like we treat people as individuals and that you're allowed to make mistakes and, learn and grow, grow and learn from that. Um, the other one is definitely our values. So we really do hop on that growth isn't optional. We like to get things done, but get things done properly. Um, and we like to build relationships. So all of that is important to us. So if you identify with those three values, that's generally why people have joined us as well. Um, in terms of culture, like it's all inclusive. Um, you know, we've got so many walks of life running up and down our virtual passages. It's, it's sometimes a little bit crazy, but we are, we're a family oriented company. You might have seen on social the past couple of weeks that we even send um, little one-year-old presents to families um, to help their kids, you know, entertain themselves a little bit with educational um, activities. So yeah, I think it really is. It's like all about growth, that transparency, that family environment. Um, working remotely has obviously had its challenges, but one of our main strategic um, perspectives right now is how do we actually better our remote working culture? So we are always looking at ways of, of getting better at that, getting closer to our people. Um, and I think they, they feel that, our, our people feel that, that it's genuine and it's honest. And I've got what, one more question that touches quite much on the on the benefits. So, what are what are the perks benefits that you offer to employees in the field of um, computing science or IS? I mean, of course, there might not be limited to this specific group of students, <laughs> but uh, what what would you get as an employee uh, when you join? Like, take us through. Like, when you join, like, what happens? Sure. So, the onboarding process is one of our our best. So. Once you get onboarded and you have been accepted into a graduate role of ours, um, you are delivered basically your own PC or laptop, sorry, as well as this amazing welcome pack that includes everything from a branded jacket and t-shirt to lint chocolates. And it literally, if I had, I'm, I was showing our SIS team today, but it's a box like this full of goodies not that that we found that a perk so we don't look at perks as you know there's a foosball machine or a pool table to play with like that's a given at a at any company these days our perks and our benefits are really around we are you're fully employed so i think that's an important thing because i think a lot of companies take you on um an internship of six months or 12 months before you're fully employed so with us you definitely fully employed um, there are the usual benefits like your provident and pension with 10x. Um, you know, if you've got a medical aid, we encourage you to, to use Discovery and we help you with the tax benefits there. Obviously, our learning and growing, you know, our growth training um, schedule is second to none out there. Every, if you open up our calendar, and it's a pity I can't share my screen tonight, but I'd show you what the training schedule looks like. So it really is centered on, on growth and working with like-minded people, more so than you know, what you get physically out of it. Um, but those do those, those are all around. So yes, we have snack packs that when you were at a client, you could you know, choose what you wanted as a snack pack and that would be delivered to your team every month. So you had your biltongs and your chips and your cool drinks and whatever else you needed. Um, obviously, you work for a software engineering company, so coffee is unlimited. Um, you know, there's 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 a lot, and it's all on our law and our culture sites in terms of the perks. When it's your birthday, you get another day's leave. They they really are. They're just so many um, that I'm happy to share that link with you, and you can read through those. But when it comes to perks, um, you know, companies you know, can throw out perks and whatever, but for a graduate or a student starting, look for those companies that offer growth more than anything else. That sounds like a lot. 
<laughs> we we get we get uh, free coffee and fruits and that's it. <laughs> um, that sounds like a lot. And I think uh, there might be one person really interested in joining because he's asking also. Okay, so okay, what does he need to do? How is the How's the hiring process, the interview process? How does it look like? Could you run uh, through a rough description of the process? And is there yeah. a technical test panel discussion? What's happening? Perfect. So for students in our graduate program, it's very different from if we're interviewing an intermediate or a senior um, engineer. So for all of you, it really is you send us your CV, you send us your ID or your passports, and you send us your latest transcripts. The interview, if successful from those, those three items. The interview will be set up by our recruitment team. You'll be um, given a phone call or a follow-up email in terms of if they require anything more from you. What the interview looks like is you literally are meeting with one of our leadership or our GMs. So all of our leadership and our GMs are the ones that are doing an interview. It's not HR and it's not our recruitment team doing the interview. You're actually being interviewed by software engineers in terms of our, our leadership and our GMs. So what they look for is just um, general problem solving skills. So there'll be maybe one or two problem solving skills and their very logical um, um, questions being asked. If you want a bit of an insight into some of the questions, feel free to go into Glassdoor, which is an open transparent site and look at some of the the other um, interview questions that people have been asked, um, but it's very problem um, solving based. So it's not technical. We do not expect you to do a technical test after, after just graduating or at, in the process of graduating. Absolutely, if you've got a couple of years experience, we are gonna throw that technical test to you just to see you know, kind of where you fit in, but not from a student perspective. Okay, that sounds uh, doable, most definitely. That sounds very doable. Yeah. Um, so Glassdoor is a good tip. We also have something similar where I always check if I do apply for companies, which is Kununu, and then I go through and like, I look, why why did the people want to join? How long are they there? What are they earning? Because that's even what is put there uh, nowadays. Um, we can take maybe one more question from the floor or two max, depending on how long they take. So now it's your last chance to actually raise a question. Who's keen? I'll, I'll answer that salary question quickly because I know it is important to, to some. We always, say, we always say, don't worry about salary, that will come in your profession. Worry about, you know, more about the company and how they're gonna promote how you grow in your career. Because remember, it's not just a job, the job is, you know, any amount of time, whereas a career you're spanning 30 to 40 years in your career. So you want to know that you're in a place that is um, going to grow you and your skills. But everybody at Intellect as a graduate starts off on the same, um, same foot, regardless of if they've got an honors, a master's um, or anything like that. We look at like, this is your first role. It's your first job with no industry experience. So if you did want to go forward and do your master's, what we do advise is if you're passionate about the subject and you really want to do it, then that is why you need to do it. Um, but it, it won't affect salary. Patrick, have, you have Patrick. another question? Um, I'm not going to lie. I did have one and I literally, my brain just blanked. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, just give me like a minute to just compose myself here. I was just <laughs> writing down what you were saying. <laughs> That's a good sign. But... Okay, is there anyone else? I think one of the questions was advice you'd give graduates when deciding on the company to join. And I think I touched it on briefly, but really do investigate the, you know, the different companies out there. Like I said, all of you here today have the pick of the litter. So see what kind of in industries and companies you're interested in. Is it a startup? Is it a corporate? Um, is it a consultancy that, you know, like one of ours that gives you that ability to rotate projects every 18 months in order to gain additional exposure and experience? Um, so really do your homework about that. I think that is why universities such as these are really forward thinking and inviting industry to come and chat to you um, so you can get a feel of, of what is expected and 
what a day in the life of a software engineer in these industries and companies would look like. So really do your homework. You've got a lot of time to do that and take these opportunities that are set up by universities to actually come out and, and speak and ask the hard questions. Okay, thanks. Patrick, you wanna go? Yes, okay, I remember now. So given the location situation, um, are you only able to work um, for intellect if you are constrained to South Africa or, you know, what is the location situation like um, given the way things are now? Yeah, so we are all fully remote at the moment. Um, our major locations are still Joburg, Pretoria, Cape Town, Durban. Um, we do have two international branches, so based in Netherlands and New Zealand. In fact, our Netherlands office has just moved from uh, to Amsterdam, so that opens up a whole bunch of new doors, um, both with clients and with prospective people coming over to work. Um, and yeah, like I think for graduates, it's very important that you are in a location with other graduates because you're all learning and growing together um, to start off with. But we are looking um, not for the graduate program, but intermediates and seniors. It doesn't matter where you're based. All right, I think that answers the question. And we have one last one from uh, Kanyeso, who was asking, does graduating with an undergrad, no postgrad, <laughs> restrict growth or limit promotion opportunities within the company? No. No. The only thing that restricts anything is yourself. Well, that's that's good closing words. The only thing that restricts uh, restricts uh, you is yourself. That's interesting. So it's basically about you growing and uh, wanting to achieve whatever you set your mind to. And I think that's a great uh, closure. Thank you so much for all the answers and insights, Bianca. I really also learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much. And um, Isaac, would you be ready to share the presentation again with uh, the slide um, of? Yes, yes, I think so. Please okay, give me awesome. a moment. So what we would like to let you know um, is that these Q&A sessions, I hope you enjoyed the first one that we're hosting. We're having these approximately every second week. Um, also, two companies are lined up for uh, the 15th of June, so save the date. And if you would like to be uh, updated, we have set up Facebook events where you can simply join and then Facebook will remind you of the event. Uh, the Zoom link is provided there. Also, um, yeah, you can definitely have a look um, at what is coming up uh, on the page. And we are looking forward to get many of your uh, questions in. We really enjoyed that you did ask uh, questions towards Bianca. She also just posted the link to, um, to the careers site in the chat so that you can have a look there too if you want to now apply at Intellect. If I was you, I would definitely give it a try. And um, then maybe uh, you can move on to the next question quickly which also we, we put, Isaac, can you move to the next one? Yeah, okay, so, so Bianca is also on LinkedIn, I saw that, and um, of course, as she said, I wouldn't go a different route now than actually sending uh, your application to the careers email address, but what, she, what you should definitely do is connect to the people that you think you might be working with in future, because that really helps. Um, they get a picture to your name, they will, might see it, um, you know, Bianca might be going to her colleagues afterwards and say, hey, there was a person really engaged in this chat. If this person sends uh, through a, an application, I would like to know. So that this is how company culture works, you know, like they, they share um, who are great candidates and that's how they find you. And um, you can go on because we have a quick, survey prepared because we would also like to get your feedback um i think isaac you can chat you can put the link in the chat it would be awesome if you do ask uh, two quick questions that we have prepared on mentimeter with us you can use either the qr code or you can just um let me just share it again can you see the screen now
Yes, yes, I can. Can you share it again? Because I, I think just post the post the link in the chat. Okay, and now it's coming. All right. Yeah, there you go. I think the same minute. So the first question that we would like to ask you um, is when you enter the the um, the page, right? The click click on the link, then you can answer the question of: uh, Do you feel more confident now apl about applying at uh, the companies uh, the company in this session? And what I can do now with you is to share my screen once again to see the answers. So five are saying most definitely. How about the others? We still have about 20 people in the call. What about the others? Maybe still a bit unsure. Why are you unsure? Okay, I think the majority is really keen. That's amazing. For, for maybe for those that are unsure, if you ever did want to, you know, set up some time with us, you know, you, we've just, you've just shared my LinkedIn profile as well, please feel free to reach out. We're also very happy to set up a separate session with the university where we can take you through the, the nitty gritties of how to prepare a CV, how to prepare for interview questions, what to look out for, um, you know, some myth busting industry um, stats with you. So for those of the, you that are unsure, um, maybe just have a, a chat to your lecturers and, and the powers that be. And again, we're very happy to set up um, classroom sessions for, for those in, engagements. Thank you so much for the offer. That's great. Okay, let's move on. We have a second question. And this is, what did you take away from the Q&A session today? Should be seeing the new question coming up on the Mentimeter. I'll tell you what my takeaway was while we're waiting on that to come through is um, just from a university perspective, I think what you guys are doing is really phenomenal and really forward thinking and being able to set up these sessions um, in a remote world and giving students the opportunity again to speak to industry and companies is really phenomenal and yeah, we definitely from an industry perspective salute what you're doing from a university perspective and really giving your students, um, all of the opportunities that you that you can think of. So thank you. And thank you for inviting us tonight. Yeah, we, we really enjoyed having you, Bianca. And thank you for giving such great insight uh, to the students. Uh, we can see that, you know, it's not just about the actual skills that you are developing in the studies, but also communication, interpersonal skills. Um, and that there's also more working at a software company than um, and there are many avenues uh, within which you can leverage your skills. So most definitely, uh, you could be very excited now, like to enter the job market uh, after finishing off with your studies. And um, yeah, great. It helped understand the industry better and what direction I want to go into. So that's great. Um, more good marks, get good marks and work on external projects ut utilizing GitHub. And qualification help you understand different concepts in real life situation by providing skills. Yeah, great guys. Thank you so much for your feedback. Awesome. Is there a final word from one of the uh, representatives from the computing sciences department from the lecturers? Just to sum it up. 
maybe just from, from our side, I think we need to thank Intellect for many years they've been giving our honors uh, top students bursaries. So that's a real strong partnership between us and our department. We really appreciate that. Thanks, Bianca. You're more than welcome. And like I've been saying this whole session, please reach out to us if you need absolutely anything at all. So like I said, whether it's just a, a quick get together in the classrooms um, to go through, you know, whatever you need us to, um, that the students need, just give us a shout and we'll set up some time um, with our technical people as well. So if they want to ask more technical questions, because as you know, I'm not technical, um, I'm not a software engineer, but we do have our people's team on standby to do such things and to offer these services to, to you guys. And thanks again for the partnership that really has been phenomenal and we have missed seeing all of you physically, but great to see you virtually again. Yeah, likewise. And thank you so much for all your feedback and for participating and uh, feel free to share the next session uh, with your friends and come and join and yeah, but put in all your questions that you have. Thanks for having me and thanks to yeah, thanks for spending the last hour with me. I'm glad my load shedding hasn't kicked in. It did say from <laughs> 6 to 8.30, but it looks like no, I still have time. Load back in South Africa. <laughs> I should consider coming, no. <laughs> Uh, every time I come to South Africa, there's load shedding. I don't know what is this, what is happening. <laughs> okay, we but uh, we're looking forward um, to have you back here. And thank you so much for joining. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. It's a real pleasure putting this together. It was so much fun and with the company representatives, we're looking forward to having more of these. Awesome. Thank Thanks so much, Rebecca. Thanks, Isaac. Thanks very much, John. Lovely to see all of you. Have a good evening, everybody, and good luck in your studies.